I'm here with Brett Fain, owner of the Iron Vault Gym, host of the Iron Vault Classic Strongman Competition down here in Tallahassee. And uh, that's coming up on June 22nd. Uh, I saw the contest on... Um, Iron Podium. Iron yeah. Podium, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And so I didn't know anything about your gym. I didn't know there was a gym associated with it. I just signed up and I saw your stuff and it, I sent you that email. It, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. We're... um. We're excited for it, and I mean, proof is fantastic working with us on it. So I'm, it's yeah. it's kind of fun. They they uh they do a really good job of hosting us last year, um, and they I mean, do they they're fantastic. I I cannot talk well enough about them since they gave us like free reign of the whole place. They gave us mics, audios, music, whatever we wanted, and then they gave us their like VIP back room for the uh, trophies and everything. And we had, they they do a good job. That's great. That that's yeah. that's uh, probably the best you could ask for from a, from an event like a uh, host. Well, that and then we didn't ask for anything. But last year they gave out uh, for winners they gave hundred dollar gift cards, and then for second and third they gave fifty dollars, and the winners got a case of whatever they wanted. I mean they 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 really went above and beyond. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, oh, Chick Fil A, yeah. well represented. Oh, yeah. I respect uh, the pre or post workout <laughs> fueling. It's ideal. You know. Yeah. Um, um I, I teach up at Leon and then I've got my four year old up here right now. So she's Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, what yeah. do you teach? Uh physics and biology. That's great. You yeah. know, I was thinking about doing uh I just finished up grad school in English and I have been shopping around for uh a teaching position. Um and so I interviewed with Tallahassee School of Math and Science, but I think they were looking for someone who'd studied education and I didn't have those credentials. So I'm kind of looking into pursuing that uh, concurrently, maybe. Well, the uh, I mean, if you're, if you're getting into that, I will I will say that, like, just get your temporary cert. It's five years now. They'll give you to take the I, that's, I think it's like 15 credit hours is all you have. Oh, to take. wow. OK. I don't think yours is even that much. If you've got a, if you've got a master's Ph.D. Dude, I don't think you have to do any extra. I think really? that like that might make you take. I think there's like nine hours of like, uh, essentially like legal things that you have to take, like responsibility. Okay. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I just first year teacher thing this year, so yeah, it's it's a uh, it's they are trying to get people in big time. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. How long have you been teaching over there? Um, I started last February. Okay. Cool. Yeah. In the middle of the year. Oh yeah, man. Well, they had I I got to replace the physics teacher I had that I liked a lot. Okay. And so he retired at the end of the year. They had an opening in the middle of the year, so like I sort of made my way in and then transferred over. That was that was the plan. That's so cool. So that you went you uh graduated from Leon High as well. Yeah. And then I replaced the guy that was my physics teacher yeah. that I took over. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'd be curious to cover your kind of your entry into strength sports, your background athletically, what led you to opening the gym, uh, maybe your experiences with uh, the unforeseen variables that are involved in opening a strongman gym with a bunch of great equipment. And uh, then of course the event, you know, and I want to hear about how you put that together and the, the uh, events that are contested. So, okay. So uh, me getting into strength sports. Um, so wrestled and then I coached wrestling for a long okay. time. Whenever I started coaching, I got more into working out, and I was at the gym a lot. Uh, I happened upon across a guy at Gold's Gym up on Capitol Circle before it was Momentum here in Tallahassee, and this guy was a national champ for collegiate in the 70s um, out wow. of FSU. And then he owned a gym in Tallahassee in the 80s called Southern Iron, and it was in the basement of that Pet Boys that's still down there on Stadium Drive. That's and great. There's apparently still some equipment in there, but the landlord has not responded to any requests to go in there and look for it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. So we can never make it in there. There's some old pieces in there uh, yeah. from the 80s, 70s, and 60s. Um, and then we also had uh, started with him, and he sort of convinced me to do powerlifting. Okay. And so I did powerlifting for three or four years. Uh, I think the best that I'd had is I did a uh, at the time, I was a 198, my best total I got. I had a right out on a 600 squat, like a 360 bench, and I'd hit a, like a 716 deadlift. You know I mean? Yeah, that was back whenever I was still pulling sumo um, for powerlifting. Right. And um, 
there's a guy that's still around in Tallahassee, uh, Dave Covan. He had done some strongman stuff in the past, and he was working out of my gym doing powerlifting. And there was like literally an old tarp that was covering up a portion of the gym that all of his old strongman stuff was in. And so, like, just on a whim, we kind of like, ah, oh, what's up? What wonder what's in here? And so we found some atlas stones and played with those. Oh wow! Um, you know, and that was Dave then convinced me to you know start doing some strongman stuff. Um, and so that first year I did strongman, I did Alabama's strongest man, which is at the time it was the largest outside nationals, which I don't know if it still is that or not, but they usually have about a hundred athletes every year for that okay. state. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was fun. I did that one, um, won that. And then I went to nationals, went to nationals, like I think I 11th, 10th or 11th, that first year at nationals. And then the next year I did OSG made it into OSG. And then I placed sixth or seventh at OSG that first year. Uh, and then I've been, from that point, we had started uh, moving all the equipment at that time. We had the strength club. And then Jeremy's had opened. There was Seminole Strength and there was Capital City. Well, the gym that I was out of, Strength Club, closed. So I had taken all that equipment and put it in this like tiny shed in the back of our house. And it was just the sweat shed. And we were like, I mean, we're talking 250 square feet with, Two racks, twenty atlas stones, a GHR, a reverse. How do you how do you walk without stubbing your toe? You you had to set up things outside okay. to have room to work in. Yeah, and then yeah. The next day, it was it was a time. Yeah. And uh, then me and my wife started the Iron Vault, and we uh, you know as far as like opening it and everything, we had some equipment whenever we started. We did take out a business loan and all that. Uh, and I have just accumulated a lot of things from competitors from you know the old days as far as they had done it oh i have this old log sitting in my house you can have it or i have these stones but i haven't used them in 10 years you can have them so we started out like that and then started building a lot of our stuff so i mean we have we've made you know somebody's donated a squat rack and then somebody else donated a squat rack well you know what i'm going to cut these up and make it into a around the platform rack that you can use for overheads uh, and then like just making things like that uh and then you know, we made a car deadlift frame and that was the first big thing we made. Uh, and I mean, we just kept going from there and we enjoyed the sort of off the wall out there events. Um, you know, there's like the one spot of it where like, they like the athletic competition of everything that's standardized, but coming from powerlifting, that was all it was. And it got right. like really boring. I don't know if you've done yeah. powerlift a lot, but doing the same thing over and over again gets, it's old. Yeah. yeah. Me at least. Yeah. Um, and so I liked the fact that it could be different and out there and wild. And so we just started making crazier and crazier things. Uh, did you see the stuff that we did last year for ours? Uh, no. So last year, oh, yeah, out of proof, I had one of the guys that sponsored this year. Um, he donated a car that was sitting in his auto shop for like okay. 10 years. And so we cut out the inside of the car and we made a car yoke. We made a car flip. Oh, I did see the car flip clip. Yeah, yeah. that looked pretty cool. Um, we did those and then we had a keg toss and we had a stone load, uh, or like the really big ones that were kind of crazy. Uh -huh. But then we kind of got into this, like we do crazy things. We have to make like something large for it. And then, uh, so we ran the Highland games too. Um, so for that one, I don't know if you saw that stuff, but we made a log carry that was, it was 60 foot long and it was a adjustable height rail system. And you had to carry essentially like a mast carry. It was a yeah. 13 inch log you had to carry on your back and then we decided we we're going to put stones on the end of it so we put atlas stones on the end um i mean it we just make crazy things uh, yeah and you know for this one we've got i always thought power stairs were cool and then i had the idea that you know what let's make the top platform a little bit larger and then we're going to do power stairs and at the very top you're going to load a stone over the back of the table uh and i don't think anybody realizes it yet but that's going to be a cardio event a lot more so yeah. than it's going to a strength of it because it's 90 seconds but you've got five stairs so you do two wow. pins so you've got 10 lifts with the pins and then you've got five picks with the stone and then one pick and low so you've got like 16 lifts in 90 seconds wow yeah so it's it's yeah. gonna be booking it yeah that's crazy we've got that one rolling and then i just put in the order for the steel for the uh we're doing a lever squat it's gonna be loaded with people that's really um, cool. That's classic. I mean, that's like oh oh three world's strongest man type of stuff. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can share a picture on here. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. So we have what I'm trying to get done for our t-shirts. Let's see. You could uh, okay. also text it to me and then I could yeah. edit it in. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll text it to you. But yeah, what I'm trying to do is old 1979. Um, they had a people squat. Uh -huh. for World's Man. And it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good picture. Uh, yeah. I'll just shoot it over to you. Cause it, I mean, perfect. Yeah. It's, um, it's a good one. And, uh, I think it'd be like a pretty cool shirt. A few edits to it, but it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. And that's, that's the biggest thing that we like is we have that. And then we're doing the frame carry for uh fridges on either side. Uh, but you know, like the odd stuff is what I, what I really like to do. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. The frustrating stuff, basically. The frustrating, you know how to weld, you have to know how to yeah. use your kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just kind of discover that you enjoyed building stuff through the necessity of creating new equipment? Or had you always been sort of like, uh, I don't know, mechanically minded? Um, More so, I would say, from wanting to make things that were different and hard. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, the issue that I had with the car flip and car yoke is it was you had to have it a yoke at one point in time and you had to have a flip for another point in time. Uh -huh. uh, the reinforcements for it being a yoke and still being able to move made it so heavy that like for a flip, it was going to be dangerous to try to flip it if you're right up against it. Yeah. So I had, yeah. To, I had to figure out a retractable handle system so that you could have some leverage to start to pick and then flip it. So, I mean, we, we use like linear go, uh, glide rails and I mean, all of these kind of things yeah. to make it doable. Uh, and so it was like out of necessity for those kind of okay. uh, trying to include. So it's, it's fun. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, I mean, the stuff we've done for Highlands, same deal. It's uh, yeah. making. It's well, it sounds like that car flip, you were, you, you were applying some of the physics to, to make oh. sure it didn't crush somebody. <laughs> oh yeah. That, um, yeah. With the one we're doing now, the lever squat, essentially, um, I went and did the beam mathematics to figure out, you know, the last the modules of elasticity for the steel we're going to use, the area to figure out what size that I needed. To uh, make sure it's safe. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's it's funny how uh, you're able to pull on a background that maybe you didn't think would be applicable to this other yeah. passion you have. Yeah, you uh, you don't realize all that you'll end up using. Uh, and you I mean like one of the other things I, I know you do a lot of stuff for like history of like strong men or like what yeah you that's what i've been oh. starting to work on here right so one of the guys that really first got me into it um as far as these odd things was um, i don't know if you know bud jeffries but he used to live over in gainesville now he has since passed away but he's the one that got me into some of the more i would say like really old school so like horseshoe bending or straight steel bending oh wow Aaron, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I go back and look at some of the stuff he did. Um, one that I might throw in in the future is he did a, they call it a backlift. Um, if you look up. Yeah. Yeah. So like super large amount of weight. And he did a semi trailer that had oranges in it. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, That's I crazy. mean, it looked, it looked awesome. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, like things like that. So it's always fun. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how a lot of kind of the modern strongman events or even the ones that have kind of fizzled out emerged from sort of circus tricks, you know, and feats of strength. I mean, a feat is something that looks impressive. So there's an aspect of it that was kind of preserved when World's Strongest Man became a television show, essentially, right? And it was being yeah. broadcast through the 80s and 90s. And it's like, we have to do stuff that not only is extremely impressive, but it looks extremely impressive, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a huge part of that. I think that, you know, another facet of that is that it has to be something that's, like, relatable, too. Yes. So, like, if in powerlifting, oh, that person just deadlifted 600 pounds, which that, that sounds like a lot. And me and you that deadlift a lot know how much that is. But for your average person, as soon as it's over, like, 150, 200 pounds, there's no, like, concept of how yeah. heavy that actually is. That's very true. And when you got the calibrated kilo plates – I mean, if just somebody's watching that on their Instagram, I mean, even if you're a power lifter, you're not going to count the reds. You have to look at what it says in the post, you know, right. RPE yeah. seven, you know, as the qualifier or whatever. But yeah, if you're just an average person, you can't tell the difference between probably 500 and 800. 
you know, on the loaded on the bar. Um, so yeah, I mean, that may, that's a great point that it's just, there's a level of relatability there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, interesting to say the least. I have a, uh, somebody joining me for a second. Can you say hi. Real oh, quick? hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice cameo. Oh, uh -huh. that's awesome. Say hi for you. I know. Oh. You being shocked. <laughs> that's yours. You can have it. Oh, it's sitting over there. Go get it, baby. Okay. Where is it? Over at over at the table with Granny. I've set it over there for you. Yeah. What's the go-to order? What's her go-to Chick Fil A? Oh, um, for me, I generally get the grilled nuggets, and then oh. uh, depends on what kind of day I've had. Is if it's like I have not had enough food, then I will get some fries too. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, hers is just straight chicken nuggets and then fries and if you can get her to eat them this is the only place in town that still has an indoor playground oh so, okay yeah that's big yeah so that we're not sitting outside in the heat all the time but yeah it's 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 fun um you know keeping her up here getting her inside is, yeah is always so. gets so unreasonably hot does she uh play around with the equipment at all i mean i know she's really young but oh yeah, yeah that's great I think it's cool to get a kid comfortable, you know, in that environment. Um, yeah. Yeah. She likes the kettlebells for like deadlifting and then she'll do some overhead nice. presses, with dumbbells and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, my other, I've got a 13 and 17 year old and they come work out every now and then, but oh, they, cool. they got friends now and they're, you know, oh gosh, working out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, we've got, we got that one coming up. June 22nd and that one's going to be fun and the other thing I did for this one is it's a night event too I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw that yeah but idea being over the summer it'd be a little bit cooler at that time frame that makes and then sense it's kind of a trial uh because really they were talking about it at Bama last year as far mm -hmm. as you know we might be able to do this as a night thing in the summer down here like an outside event during the day is like the most brutal yeah it is horrible it is absolutely horrible so, but yeah, man, uh, you know, the, the history stuff is really cool. There's a, there's a few guys that I've followed for a while. I don't know if you've ever heard of, uh, Jamie Lewis. Yeah. Plague of strength. Uh-huh. Yeah. He has I, quite a, uh, he has quite an interesting blog or he's oh, he has a very interesting blog. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's a character for sure, but his yeah. history stuff is fantastic. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he's an awesome dude. Um, I've known him since he started the whole thing. Back in the day, he had uh, Chaos and Pain, if you remember. Yep. So 2010, yeah. So 2010, 2012. And that's where I really got into the history portion of it. And he, um, you know, obviously all that stuff happened. And now he's got Plague of Strength. Yeah. But yeah, he's, uh, he's a very interesting character. Whenever we start talking history, and I think that a lot of the people that now look into history for any of that kind of stuff, um, it's like he's who sort of inspired them for a lot of that. Um, yeah. Because like, I mean, I remember the first time reading a few of his articles, um, the Sandwina lady and all that kind of stuff. That's always fun. Yeah, I, th I think that I'm making the videos as I educate myself. You know, it's not like I have this wealth of knowledge. It's just something really interesting that uh, I figure, why not make a video while I learn about it? Right. It's, um, you know, as you get more and more into it, it, uh, there's more and more you find out. There's more people that you, you know, read about. Um, yeah. Or, you know, whenever you start looking at somebody that's based their training off somebody in the past, that's interesting. Um, I mean, you know, just deep diving on stuff. I found the, like, the Saxon Trio. Like, there's a, yeah. there's still a book you can find. It's a PDF where uh -huh. it is their um, their diet. You can find their diet online. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Um, or even, like, their preferred drink at the bar kind of thing. Like, stuff like that. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Which, I think like it's it's like a whole egg, like a dark stout beer and um, like honey. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know that I would ever choose that, but you know. It's well, I fun think to look at. two of those things are probably approved by Stan Efforting. Two of the three. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really I mean, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. How would you approach structuring a training week? Like very generally, not for this specific event, but for strongmen. So how I generally approach a training block while you're trying to, so uh, what I have found out is, so, you know, back in the day, whenever I did powerlifting, it's, you know, a few lifts typically, right? You're generally training those few lifts that I was able to recover 
a lot faster from those. Yeah. And so what I did was I was able to train six or seven sessions a week. And so with that being said, I was able to train six or seven times a week. Whenever I switched to strongman, it takes quite a bit more recovery, um, mm. specifically for some of the uh, moving events. So something like a yoke carry yeah. or uh, a farmer's carry. And I mean, I definitely have done it wrong. Um, trying to train just like I did for powerlifting. And that didn't yeah. seem to work out. Um, so for all the athletes that I coach and then myself, uh, generally about four days a week tends to be like the sweet spot mm-hmm. for most people. Um, and then a lot of things that, you know, we look at structuring the program, it's usually two upper body days, two lower body days, some general event focus. Um, we kind of undulate between a heavy carry or something that's going to like sort of simulate that grip wise or whatever you've got coming up. And then we have one day, if I have somebody that's suing, they can actually split jerk or push jerk. One overhead day will be one of those jerks. And the other day would be like a push press or strict. Okay. Press. Got and, it. Uh, and then including, I mean, you should have at least like two hard cardio sessions Yeah. Uh, a week at the end there, um, whether it's bike or uh rower or carries or something. And that's generally how I go about it. Whenever it's somebody that's cutting weight, you know, some things will have to change a little bit, but the big thing is to just try to keep intensity up on the main lifts. Mm. Uh, Cause as you're dieting down, you need to keep that strength for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, so I've done, I generally, I sit around right now, like around 210 and then I cut 200 to compete. Okay. I've done as much as I cut from like 203 to 175 for one. Wow. Um, and I've done oh a water cut like that. Um, Man. It's not fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a it's a hard time. But I mean, um, I, you know, one guy that coached me in the past was Andrew Clayton, and I have done. I've seen him actually. Where I first met him was the first OSG. He did thirty eight pounds in thirty six hours, and then put back on forty pounds in the twenty four hours after the weigh in. That's so um, crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be there 8 a.m., probably a little bit delirious, you know, off of some dandelion root and 16 ounces of water in the past 24 oh, yeah. hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it gets wild. The last pro meet I did was the 90 kg clash down in uh, Lakeland. We had a guy, uh, Marshall, which, you know, I... I think he scheduled his wife coming in after weigh-ins so she wouldn't have to see him like in his worst. But, <laughs> dude, the night before he had cut so much water, he lost his vision. We had oh, to walk wow. him to his room and leave his door open kind of thing. Like, That's yeah, awful. It was, yeah. So, I mean, do you think I'm going to, it's going to be that bad? I, I'm sure I'll be one, sitting 185, 186. Um, Cause I'm in, you know, I'm in like a 750 calorie deficit, maybe a little more right now. Um, and we got five weeks, let's say four, because the event week, hopefully I'm eating at maintenance, but like six pound cut from 186 to 18. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be yeah. fine. Um, if you just switch to like a keto diet, you'll generally lose like, I'd say eight to 10 pounds of water weight without really changing your diet that much. Wow. Um, That's crazy. And, um, well, if you, so whenever you switch to no carb, you don't replenish glycogen. Right. If you spend glycogen in your body, um, you will lose all of the water weight. Yeah, no, it's that's what I do typically. Is I'll start with that. Okay. And then we will we will water cut after that. So like gotcha. if we have to really water cut, it'll be it will be a uh, baby doll. Sorry. It's okay. We will do like a. I usually do hot bath. It's my favorite way. Okay. Um, just because I get so uncomfortable whenever we've got a. Uh, like a sauna that you yeah. can't breathe. Mm, so hot yeah. bath is my preferred way. Uh, some people have those like sauna suits where it's like, it cuts off at the neck and you wear the sauna. Right. I've, yeah. I've, the keto is a good, I hadn't thought of that, you know, to kind of drop the, the muscle glycogen. Am I going to have to stop taking creatine that week? No, nah. I mean, you're, 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 you're at a point where it's not going to be too wild. If we're yeah. talking like 20, 30 pounds, then I might say, okay, well, we can really start being concerned about it. You know, with that being said, uh, I think that the harder events of this one, um, I mean, the deal is like max squat. You're not going to get like that much better at a max squat in, um, you know, uh, like five weeks. Right. The one thing, the block press is going to be the hardest to get like accustomed to. I think. That um, makes sense. It's a little bit wider um, and it's just different. 
Yeah. Uh, the power stairs really is not too bad. The stone load is pretty basic for, you know, strongman stuff. The keg throw is going to be a little different. There's a, if you go back and watch last year's video of it, you'll see some guys, they set it on the ground behind them and they grab like the top part of the handle with both hands. That's the way to do a full size keg for okay. regular, regular size people. Cause yeah. We, we don't have that giant space in between our legs to hold the keg. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I, you know, I'm five, eight, I'm, I'm a little guy. So um, I'm definitely part of my motivation for doing the water cut is that the event weights will be lighter and I'll have be less likely to zero out <laughs> or oh, at yeah. least I yeah. won't zero out on one event, you know? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, I've, I've, you know, I was there for a long time and then I had toyed with, if I ever wanted to go up a weight class, and I mean, eventually it just happened and mm-hmm. um, I'm still trying to grow into that weight class now. It's been like two yeah. years, but, uh, you know, it's, you see guys in my weight class, the guy that cut all that weight loss division, he cut from 240 to 200. Oh my gosh. Class. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, it's just that athletic, what they'll do to your body for, uh, you know, winning. Competing. Yeah. Uh, it's a different, it's a different group. Like most like general civilians are just not, they would, they would never do those kind of things. Yeah, uh, at those like high level of competition, I mean, if your people are willing to do a lot. Yeah, um, going to kidney that, failure. Yeah, well, there's that like I think it's 1988 Olympics. They had a survey of the athletes. I don't know if you remember that, but they told them, "Hey, if I gave you a compound that guaranteed that you would podium, but it would kill you in five years, would you do it?" And it was like 95 percent said they'd yeah, do it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's, it's what it is. Yeah, um, it's that competitive you know, spirit kind of thing. So yeah. it's wild. Yeah. I guess that the wrestling mindset is probably in there somewhere too. Cause I'm sure that you were having to make weight when you were in high school. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, being able to do that definitely helps or just being able to, you know, suffer through it for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think right. that when, what we do when we're teenagers, like programs the way that we're wired, you know, and even Uh if we didn't like it when we're doing it, we kind of find ourselves having to do those kinds of things (laughs) again when we're older. Um, That's Uh what I was like an endurance athlete in my teens. Um, And I just have realized that, I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm good at the thing, but I have to uh, kind of go all in on whatever uh, sort of physical pursuit I'm interested in now, because that was just how I grew up you know, with right. running and triathlons. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's, I think it's good for just everybody to pick something like that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, even if I've got like general pop client that, Oh, I just want to be healthier. Picking some type of numerical goal mm-hmm. or something or like weight base of, I want you to be able to deadlift 200 pounds or you need to be able to do this uh, helps them a lot too. It doesn't yeah. really matter what their background is, or what they're in there for but it's a different motivation other than I want to be healthy. Okay. Well, there's like a hundred different measurements for that. Right. Let's- yeah. You need to quantify a little bit better. Yeah. Right. What you're going to uh, right. try to make progress in. That makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you've given me a lot to consider. Um, and I, I really appreciate you hopping on. I feel like I have, I'm slightly less unprepared now for uh, June 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll be fine, man. It's going to be fun. Um, the one thing, how many shows have you competed in so far? Zero. No, I've never done a strongman comp. I've never trained for strongman. I did the log for the first time yesterday, and I messed okay. with the stone for the first time this morning. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. what you're going to be blown away at is that this community for strongman is the most supportive community that I've ever competed in. That's why I stuck with it, too. That's um, awesome. So the first show I went to, that first Bama, the only – other guy that showed up in my weight class was a veteran competitor and uh, I had just had a lot of static strength background from powerlifting which I was going to win at the show it was going to happen but that was the guy that was there next to you cheering the loudest for you to do better on each event than anybody else there that's awesome they're not trying to sabotage you they're out there yelling for you they're you know the first ones to give you the congrats when you get done it's not it doesn't carry the same like animosity as other sports that I've seen. And, uh, you know, we did that, uh, U90 KG clash where it was the world championships. But I mean, we had a group chat for six months. That's like, it's still going on now. Uh, two years later that, you know, we all still keep in contact. That's all so cool. Good friends. Um, you know, 
Uh, yes, there is. Uh, I don't know if you follow Tyler Davis, uh, but he's a 90 kg. Probably he'd probably be best 90 kg that there's ever been. Uh, I say that you know, there's a lot of people that would argue that, yeah. but right now for sure. And you can see him make these posts of trying to, you know, call out people online that are in the same weight class. And yeah, it's, it's for the, you know, same thing you get with WWE. You're trying to make a show. Right. And yeah. And drama, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a, it's a close knit community and we're kind of all there for everybody. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got, I'm, I've gotten so excited. I think part of what prompted me to move in this direction was doing the strength stories things and looking at the strongman stuff. And I was like, man, this looks so fun. I got to figure out a way to uh, get into it myself. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many things, uh, you know, that make it fun to be around. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a different culture than I've seen in any of the other strength sports. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, I've seen it, graduates that with you know, powerlifting i think for sure too it seems like it's more supportive than um, what i had experienced too yeah i was but i love i love the direction that it's going for sure mm -hmm. yeah but, yeah and i wonder if part of that is facilitated by the level of uh variability that is like in the sport you know because right. it might yeah like you you kind of i mean you might know get an events list but there might not be implements you can train on, you know, and you've never done that. So you don't really know what your max is. Whereas squat, bench, deadlift, you know what you want, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, um, talking about the variability. So I'll give you a shout out to two other guys, but will developments running his first meet this summer and it's called the psycho circus. So he has a lottery of each, like, so there's a deadlift, there's a press, there is a carry. Um, there is a load. I can't remember what the other one is, but he's got a lottery of like 10 events for each of those. And he doesn't know what they're going to be till the day of. He's going to spin a wheel and that's what happens. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then my other guy, Steve Coyne, he runs a lot here in Florida. And then, um, so he's the USS rep. And then okay. the, um, uh, Strongman Corp rep is Alan Colley down there at Iron House. But okay. both, I'm like, everybody's good friends. We all, we all hang out, live together. We, you know, there's two federations, but everybody jumps back and forth pretty okay. regularly. Yeah. It's, it's not like, um, USAPL trying to keep everybody out. Right. Yeah. 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 Got which is, which is fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, man. Um, uh, yeah, I look forward to having you out there. It'll be fun. I think you'll have a good time. Um, and like I said, if you got any other questions or anything else you want some help with, just let me know, man. I really appreciate it, Brett. And yeah, thanks for your time. Looking forward to it.